I finally broke down and bought a thousand gallon water tank. So today, in today's video, we're gonna take this water tank and see if we can move it up on top of our property. So do you guys have your coffee before you do your chores? Your morning chores feeding animals? Or do you have your coffee after? In the summer, I usually have my coffee after chores. But in the winter, I'll drink coffee before chores. I don't know. Fun fact. My mini truck. Oh man. I hate to say this guys. But it's out of commission. You might not see this mini truck for a little while on the channel. Some of you guys have noticed in the other video that it was smoking. Calling a mechanic, they said it might be a blown head gasket. So this week I'm taking this to a mechanic and they might have it for two weeks, three weeks, who knows. It's a pretty easy fix, but it's just a little bit tedious because you might have to drop the motor down. Uh, so with that, we're going to have to do our chores the old fashioned way. With my two legs. With my two legs. Delilah and her two chicks that she hatched. We keep them in there while they continue to grow up. That gray one does have a bum leg still, but it looks pretty good. The chicken is getting around pretty good. It's moving around, it's pretty quick. The leg looks a lot better than what it did when she was first hatched. She, assuming she, I don't know if they're roosters or hens. Um, but the one leg is just kind of straight out. She only hatched two chickens. And these are our very first chickens that we've ever hatched ever in seven years. The black chicken looks really good and healthy. And the only problem I see with keeping that chicken around is that it's not going to be able to jump up on a roosting bar. Because it's not doing it yet. The other one does. They roost up on here sometimes. And that little one can't get up there. So I don't know what I'm going to do. It's like, like I, I want to keep, keep her around because she looks good. I mean, she looks healthy. Our little tiny Tim. These are our heritage breed turkeys. I was putting out these her heritage turkeys in a netting. But the first day I did that, you know, I did a video on it and, and uh, I had the, the netting that they shouldn't be able to go through. But at, towards the end of the day, they went through the netting and I could not get them back in. They didn't, they didn't even, I thought they would come back to this coop that they've been living in for the last two, three weeks, uh, but they didn't. So I was out at midnight chasing them around, trying to put them back in. Our pumpkins, they're growing, they're growing. Looks like we're leaf farmers. There's a watermelon. Two watermelons. I don't see a pumpkin yet. And after two good rains, this is still not filled up. But this one, it's filled up. The water is like barely touching this overflow part. So we have water in this, full water. It's amazing how comfortable you get when you get a farm vehicle. We've only had it for four months, but man, we were so relying on that farm vehicle. <laughs> we're waiting to butcher these chickens, and after that, we're gonna move the turkeys in one of these. The sun is coming up just above those trees, so it's still trying to get there. We're trying to beat that sun. Chicken's moving, moving, moving. Fertilizing the land. Free fertilizer. <laughs> oh 
calm down, everybody. Everybody calm down. I have yet to have time to make a feeder for them. But they're almost ready to be put in our freezer. So at this point, it's like, ah, forget it. They eat less feed if you just put it on the ground like that. They feel like they forage more and they eat more of the grass and the bugs when you put it on the ground. And you're not using as much feed for them. So I'm actually saving a little bit of feed by doing that. Now these turkeys are the ones we had 15 of them and we lost most of them and now we have five. These guys seem to be the healthy ones. They made it. They made it through and they look really good. Eventually I'm going to move these guys and let them out of the coop with the netting. But we're not there yet. On to the pigs. Zeke! Good morning, Zeke! We're gonna set it up like this, how you already have it set up? Yeah. Start there. Move around, we'll get some Zeke a couple trees. Hey, Alvaro, good morning. Good morning, babies. Baby pigs. We're keeping the female and the male separated and it's really because we don't want baby pigs right now because if we put them together they could breed again which is fine but then the pigs would be born in the winter which we don't want. What's your plan for today Lorraine? Today I plan on canning some tomatoes. I bought three giant boxes of tomatoes last week and so now the last box is sitting in the kitchen and I need to get that canned up. I've already done um, two batches of canning. I made tomato sauce and then I canned whole tomatoes. So I think with the last box I'm going to just do like a roasted salsa. As we're making our way through the trees, I had to come in previous couple days and clear out some tree limbs so that way we could get in here. Oh, get your kids over there, get your kids. Zeke, you're so patient. They don't take after you, Zeke. They do not take after you. Of course, the week that we lose our mini truck is when we're on the highest part of our property and where we need it the most. That was gonna happen eventually. It's almost like everything, like everything that you do here, you need a backup. You have the main thing, then you need a backup. And a backup to the backup to the backup. So maybe I need two mini trucks. Come on, big, come on. She's securing the area, making sure it's all good. All right, here comes that sun. Did you tie that other corner? At the other end I did. You did? Always electrify the fence. This one, I think I need to charge. I need to charge back at the barn because it's not, it's not hitting. I think because it was sitting kind of in the shade for for a week and it was getting some sun but probably mostly shade and then uh, so it wasn't hitting on the fence so I need to take back that back at the barn so this one comes with a charger sometimes you do have to charge or when you're not using these you know maybe in the winter you're not using really so you have to charge them I don't want to get too close, but over there, just on that tree, the bottom of that tree, Japanese hornets, they're invasive. They will kill our honeybees over there, um, but they are eating the sap from this big tree, and they all kind of huddle up right there. I don't know if it's a nest. I don't think it is, but they're definitely eating the sap. Since our charger over there is getting charged up, I have these jumper cables. 
it's just a wire in between them and we're gonna hook onto this one and then we're gonna hook onto this one let's check it excuse me Zeke excuse me yep we're hot two nettings and then two nettings so four nettings running off of one charger by that jumper cable you guys are like little Ewoks little Ewoks in the forest so around August every year this is the part of the season where we put a lot of food away food that we've grown even though this year last year this year you know it's her first time growing in this new land that we have and so it's taking it's taking some time to grow a lot of our food but another option where you can do you don't have to grow the food to can it there's a farm near us that sells their produce in bushels and boxes and so we were lucky enough to get some three giant boxes like that size boxes um, of tomatoes these are organic tomatoes and I should say no spray no spray tomatoes and um, so this is the last of them I've already canned I did 12 jars yesterday and then last week crushed tomatoes last week and then yesterday I did whole tomatoes so today I'm gonna just gonna do this roasted tomato guajillo salsa and it's from this book I can see that <laughs> I have lots of plans <laughs> okay so Jason stepped out and I I'm almost done with this canning so I figured he probably wants this filmed so um, I'm just gonna let you know what I'm doing here um, all the jars are filled plus two extra that we are gonna put in the fridge I don't need to can these because we are gonna eat these two jars right away um, so I am just taking my debubbler tool and taking out the air bubbles seven jars so we're canning seven jars these I label every single thing that I put into the refrigerator but they're not that hot because you shouldn't boil these anyway they're just kind of like warming them up just want to show you how pretty what a pretty color they are so now I'm gonna water bath can them for 30 minutes now it's not very spicy but it has a little kick to it I like it spicy I know it has a nice flavor to it nice um, you're gonna eat the whole jar I was really hoping to move this tank with the mini truck, just because I think it would be fun to do. <laughs> this weighs 160 pounds. I think I better strap this down. Yeah, I'm afraid it would maybe roll over this way and roll back down the hill. This, this might be a tricky part too. I'm trying to unload it. Uh, yeah. Don't need it to roll back down the hill. Yeah, you try to prop it up on this side, and then I'll go on this other side and try to guide it down. You ready? Yeah. You lift it up. Yeah. Was it heavy? No. Good job. Wait, wait, that wasn't good enough. Good job. There you go.
it's a little slanted, kind of sloping down. We need to prop this up just a little bit. It's not too bad. It should be level. This is the top of the property. Since we moved here, I've been thinking about building a structure up here, saving water and then gravity feed that water down to our animals. Or if we have animals up this high, we can always use something like this to feed them, water them, even gravity feed the water down to the forest. I'm thinking maybe a 30 by 16 roof. Uh, I don't know, I don't want anything too big. Uh, a thousand gallons might be a bit much, but we're just gonna see. And if, it's, if, if that's not enough, you know, if the roof line is not big enough for to fill up a thousand gallons, well then I'll move it. I'll move a thousand gallons, maybe put 500 gallons here. I don't know. Uh, that's something we're just gonna have to figure out and try it, try it. And I'm thinking a lean-to shed. I built one of those before at a previous property and I loved it. Of course, lumber prices are a lot higher now than they were, you know, six years ago. This is gonna get us closer to raising the larger animals. We had our two steers last year, but that was a challenge because we had no water available up this high. Starting that process of saving more water. Something that is always on my mind. I don't know if it's because I'm tired of, of running hoses. That's probably it. The rain's almost done with canning the tomatoes. But another thing I've got to do today is do a podcast. I started a podcast called Homestead Shop Talk with Ben Holler Homestead, Al from Lumina Acres. And it's just us just hanging out, talking shop, talking about homestead stuff. So you can find that on iTunes now, plus Spotify. And we also have our own uh, YouTube channel. And right now we're going to... We're going to get on there, record a new episode. So if you haven't checked that out, check out Homestead Shop Talk. And that's it. It's about an hour podcast. And then let's check on these jars. Are these done? Yes, they're done. Well, they have to sit. I like to let mine sit overnight um, on a towel. So there's seven jars and they are just kind of chilling out. Thank you guys for watching. We think Lorraine's getting sick a uh, little bit. I think I have a little head cold. <laughs> <laughs> but we appreciate you guys watching. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.